Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a one-way ANOVA test in SPSS. Now before we start, let's take a look at some sample data. Let's say I want to run a course and I've got three different options for running the course. I can run it in a classroom only, I can run it in an online uh, uh, environment only, or I can do a blend of both classroom and online. And I'd like to test to see if there's a difference between test scores for students who have taken each of these three different types. So my classroom only students, I've got 10 of those and my scores are listed at the end of a test here on the first column on the left hand side of the screen. The middle column contains the test scores for my online only students and the uh, third column contains the test scores for my blended learning students. So I'd like to be able to know if there's a significant difference between these three groups. So I'm setting out my null and alternative hypothesis here. My null hypothesis is that the mean of the classroom group is equal to the mean of the online group, which is equal to the mean of the blended group. In other words, that there's no difference between the means of the three groups. My alternative hypothesis, my H1, is that the mean of the classroom group is not equal to the mean of the online group, which is not equal to the mean of the blended group. In other words, at least two of the means are different. And we're going to use SPSS to uh, run a test on these three data sets of data here. So um, I've got my data already prepared and stored in an Excel file. And you can see here that, uh, uh, just like in the slide, I've got my classroom, online and blended learning groups divided into three columns with my test scores listed. Now I'm going to use SPSS to open up that file. So on my SPSS data editor, choose File, then select Open and choose um, Data. And uh, in the open data window, change the files of type uh, from spssstatistics.sav to Excel. And I've got my sample file for this video listed here. Select your file and click on open. Now SPSS knows that it's opening up an Excel file. So um, I'm not going to make any changes here, but a couple of things to notice in this opening Excel data source is that the checkbox for read variable names from the first row of data, that that's checked because if you look back at my Excel file, you can see that I've got variable names in the first row and SPSS needs to know that. I've just got one worksheet, so the worksheet is listed here. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm happy with that, so click on OK. So we can see now, just move the um, editor over here to the left hand side and a viewer for my results also appears on the right hand side here. You can see here in my data editor that the data have been imported into the SPSS editor space uh, very much like you see it in Excel. Now unfortunately, uh, a major difference being of course that the columns are now contain the header of the three variables and there are only 10 lines of data rather than the 11 we saw in Excel. Unfortunately, we cannot run an ANOVA test uh, the way the data are laid out here. Here we have three columns with uh, 10 variables in each. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change that from three columns of 10 into one column of 30. So first off, I'm going to use this first column of classroom only uh, to store my, my, in this case, 30 values, 10 for each of the three samples. So my first 10 values are fine, so I'm going to leave them there where they are. I'm going to select my second set of 10 values with my mouse, right click and cut, and I'm going to paste those in underneath the first 10 values. So I've now got my first two groups listed in the first column, and I'm going to copy over my third group here and paste that in underneath. And uh, I've now got one column with uh, 30 values instead of three columns with 10 values each. I no longer now need the second and third column here, so I'm going to select both of those with my mouse and right click and choose clear to get rid of those. So now I've got um, all 30 va variables that were listed in my original set of data, but I now need to go ahead and tell SPSS which of these belongs to group 1, which is the classroom, group 2, which is the online, and group 3, which is the blended learning group. To do that, I need a new variable, so uh, I'm looking at the, uh, in the data editor in the data view at the moment. If you see the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you've got the data view tab open. Select the variable view tab to change to uh, changing the variables. So first of all, a couple of changes to the um, uh, first variable that we have, which is our first column. Uh, it's called classroom only here, uh, but we now know that all three types of learning are listed here. So I'm going to just select that and type in over it uh, learning underscore type to give it a new generic name. Um, I'm happy it's a numeric variable. I'm going to change the decimal places from one down to zero. 
uh, the label here in the middle is no longer necessary so just select that and hit the delete key to remove the data label and everything else is fine with that variable we now need to add in a second variable so click in the name uh, for the second row and I'm going to call this variable group because I'm going to tell SPSS that there are three groups uh, three groups in my set of data so I'm fine with everything here Ch I'm going to change the decimal places from 2 down to 0 well, the most important thing I need to do here is in the values column. So select that column there, the values in row 2, and you'll see a little blue button here with three dots on it pop up. So click on that button to get the value labels window. Now I'm going to have three values here. I'm going to have a value of 1 for the first group, 2 for the second group, and 3 for the third. So this is where I give the values and the labels for each. So I'm going to type in number 1 for value and the label here that this is the classroom only group. So give that the label, in my case here, of classroom only. The value number two, well, that was the online only group. Click on add. And value number three, this was the blended learning group. And click on add. So now I've got my list of the three values, one, two, and three, and the names given or labels given to each of the three values. So I'm happy with that, so click on OK. So I'm now happy with my two new variables are in here, so I'm going to click back to the Data View tab in the bottom left-hand corner to see my original data listed here. So now I, I, I've got my learning type variable listed across the top and all 30 values here, so I need to now tell SPSS which of these are in uh, value number 1, value number 2, and value number 3. So I'm just going to do this manually because I have small sets of data here. So the first 10, I'm going to type in the number 1 here to represent the first 10. And then number two for the next set of ten. You can do this a lot quicker than I'm doing it here, but I'm just doing it for to let everybody see exactly what it is that I'm doing. And then number three for the third set of groups, and this is going to show up as the blended learning group here. And I'm going to widen that column so that everybody can see what we're looking at here. So you can see now that I've got my first 10 sets of variables. These are the classroom only. My second set are the online only. And my third group are the blended learning group here. If you see 1s, 2s, and 3s here, uh, there's a button on the toolbar. It's called the Value Labels button. Uh, it's the one with the red number 1 and the red A on it. And if you click on that button, it toggles you between the number, the value for each of the groups, and the label that you gave each of the groups. So it's a good idea to do that to check uh, that you're OK with your data. I'm now ready to run the ANOVA test. To do that, select the Analyze menu. We're going to be comparing means, so select the fourth option here, which is compare means. And we'll scroll down then to the very last option on the compare means menu, which is our one-way ANOVA test. So select that. This gives us our one-way ANOVA window here, and there's a couple of things we need to do here before we can finally run the test. So our learning type, well, this is our dependent variable here, so we're going to click on that, and I'm going to drag it over and drop it into the dependent list here. The groups now become the factor, so there's an option down here for factor, and this is where we tell SPSS that there are three different groups and what their names are. So I'll click on groups, and I'm going to drag it down and drop it into the factor box down here, and then click on OK to run the test. Let's switch over now to the right-hand side and take a look at the, um, the ANOVA table that's displayed here. We can see that the between and, and within group scores for sums of squares and degrees of freedom and mean square. But the uh, values that we're looking for here, we're looking for our F statistic, which has a value of 5.059, as you can see in the ANOVA table, uh, which is quite a high value. And we can see that the significance or the p-value is 0 0.014. So if we were running our test at an alpha value of, say, 0 0.05, we can see that our significance or our p-value is less than 0 0.05. Uh, therefore, we would reject an, the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the means of the three groups uh, in favour of the alternative hypothesis that at least two of them are different. There's one more thing that we can do here to determine, well, where are the differences? Because uh, the, the uh, ANOVA table here tells us that there is a difference, but it doesn't tell us which groups are different. So I'm going to go back to my data editor again and run the ANOVA test one more time. So select the analysis Analyze menu compare means and choose one way ANOVA. And over on the right hand side, so um, the, the variables will be still grouped where, where we put them before. So over on the right hand side there is a button called post hoc. So select that button and we can see that there are many many options for running different types of post 
proc tests. The one I'm going to use here is the Tukey test, so just check that one box. You can check others for what you want to do, but for the moment, just select uh, Tukey's, um, that's the HSD Honest Significant Difference test, and click on OK. And our ANOVA test, to click on OK to run it again. And this time over on the right hand side, we can see we get our. Um, um, uh, an over table again here at the top with the same results as before, but we've now got the results of our post hoc test. Uh, we can see the comparison of the groups here in the first column, so we can see the classroom being compared with online only and blended learning only. And if we go over to the fourth column here where I've got my arrow, we can see that the significance level for uh, the difference between the classroom only and the online only is the p-value is 0.986, so uh, that's not significant. But we can see that the difference between the classroom only and the blended learning has a value of 0 0.033, so that is less than 0 0.05, so that is a significant difference. So this tells us that there's a difference between a classroom and the blended learning. Um, is there a difference between uh, the others as well? If I scroll down to the third option here, so the blended learning option, this can tell us the difference between blended learning and classroom and blended learning and online only. So I'm on the last row of the multiple comparisons table. And we can see that our p-values of 0 0.033 and 0 0.023 um, are give us, they're less than 0 0.0. Five, so that tells us that there is a significant difference between blended learning and classroom only and blended learning and online only. So that's how you conduct a one-way and over test in SPSS. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.